Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. Each week, one of our hosts introduces an original short story, which we then use as a springboard for a spirited and lighthearted discussion on whatever the moral or theme is. This week, it's my turn, and I'm going for, uh, I believe I used the term, a heady topic. What does that mean? He's bringing the sad, or the thoughtful, as it were. Insightful. Oh, I thought it just meant like a lot of people were going to die. That's what heady means to you? I wasn't sure. I associate it with Lena Hetty, and she played Cersei. And a lot of people died because of that woman. You know, you should probably go a whole episode without mentioning Game of Thrones. That'd be cool. It'd be weird. I don't think I've <laughs> talked about Game of Thrones. I think you do. Like every episode. I don't think on Smirk I've talked about Game of Thrones. You should play the tape. Very much. Play the tape. As- <laughs> Nobody talks about that show anymore. No, it's it's culturally dead. So 2019. Wow. No, I think this is going to be a topic that is on everyone's minds. Or at least it will be by the, by the end of this episode. It should be. Hmm? Is Rick Grimes going to show up? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? My whole story is how to make The Walking Dead Rick Grimes again. Perfect. I want to make it Grimesy again. I was referencing a global pandemic, Aaron. <laughs> you know, that really does make more sense. <laughs> yeah, it's COVID themed. It's COVID themed. Talking about how I think, open it up. That's what I'm going with. It's called oh, open God. it up. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, that's Eddie, all right. Just kidding. I have no opinion whatsoever that I will say publicly. All right. If you like yeah, Smirk, smart. every app has a share feature. So please do us a favor and share this episode on your social media outlets. Sincerely, it really does wonders. Now, you guys ready for my story? Yes. Ready, Freddy. Now. You, you can sense our palpable excitement. It's time for a story. And you will like it, Zach. All right. It has been several months since his radio station had burned down, but after the complete rebuild a few weeks back, Hamilton was just happy to be back on the air. Today was his first day, and it felt glorious to throw his voice back on the airwaves. As he reclined in his favorite chair, relaxing in his favorite sweats, and waiting anxiously for the soccer match to start, his place in all of this began to crystallize. For years, death threats and chaos had surrounded him. He had been challenging the status quo for some time, pointing a finger at hypocrisy and what he considered criminal behavior in regards to this community's local politicians. Politicians. Jesus, he thought. His mind immediately calculated all the bribes and kickbacks he willingly exposed on a daily basis over the past few years. All acts from these supposed representatives of his fellow citizens. Criminals with classier ties, he thought. He remembered how scared many of these politicians became as he exposed their lies daily how the threats had increased, and especially how the danger amplified for him and his staff, culminating in the torching of his beloved radio station. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but that was nothing more than luck. Yet that is not all Hamilton considered. He also reflected on the lives and minds he was changing, opening the door to the truth. He wondered if those politicians had ever told the truth in any of their campaign rallies. Even as they tried to discredit him and destroy his reputation, Hamilton knew he was doing it for the right reasons. Because the people need to know. They deserve to know. Damn criminals, he said aloud just as the soccer game finally began. As the first kicks were unleashed, Hamilton heard the obnoxiously loud motorcycles outside, whizzing up and down the street like juvenile stuntmen wannabes. But he had been waiting for this game all year. He wasn't about to tell those kids to get off his long, so to speak. He's not that old. Not yet. Whoosh! The ball went through the net. Goal! Score! Hamilton started screaming and bouncing in his chair with righteous enthusiasm. His excitement was so palpable, he did not even hear the initial round of bullets as they broke the glass in his living room window. It was only when the first bullet struck his gut that he realized he was being assassinated. Hamilton struggled to get up, but not before a second and third bullet penetrated his body, and he realized his struggle was coming to an end. As he fell back in the chair, the fourth bullet ripped through his chest, just as he heard the motorcycles fade off into the distance. Hamilton's breathing slowed. He knew this was one threat he would not make it back from. His mind was slowing down, yet still somehow racing. 
contemplating all the lies he exposed. Were they worth it? Taking down a few politicians, did that truly equate to a human life? As his eyes began to close and his soul prepared for a vacation, Hamilton remembered those lives he changed. The truth is already out there, and his people now will know just how true it was with his passing. This was Hamilton's final thought as his life passed on. And when the police arrived on the scene, they were astonished at what they found. Hamilton lay dead in his recliner, riddled with bullets. Blood and glass were everywhere. But Hamilton, his face, it somehow wore a smile. Was it a smirk? Do you wear a smirk? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's what that's what it was missing. Hang on. Typo. <laughs> Done. Why does your computer sound like that? I have an old-timey computer. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got one of those uh, computers that need an ink ribbon. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that. I don't know why I just did a... <laughs> I think that was a machine gun. That Yeah, I was going to say that was definitely like a semi-automatic. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. He was adding sound effects to his story. <laughs> so what do you think the moral or theme was? The cost of truth. Hmm. Hmm. True. Yeah, this one, I feel like it could go in a couple of directions, but I really like what Zach had said, but that's cheating. So let me offer a secondary opinion to this, which would be... Paying the iron price. (laughs) How do you come up with all of these clever ones? I (laughs) like I was referencing your Game of Thrones references earlier. That's what they call a callback. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they call mansplaining. Maybe if you were listening, it wouldn't be mansplaining. It would just be explaining. <laughs> Anytime. Don't worry. We got a whole show. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think of something different than Aaron, what Zach could said. Please stop mansplaining this <laughs> yes. to her. I'm sorry to mansplain this, but can you hand crank that a little faster? <laughs> um. Okay, the moral or theme... The consequences (laughs) are sometimes worth it. Like, if you have something that you want to say and that you feel is worth getting out there, you have to accept the consequences that will come with that. Okay. Well, it is, is true journalism worth the price? That's what the moral or theme is. Is true journalism worth the price? What's true journalism anymore? Well, that's all (laughs) part of what I got coming up, so why don't you hold on to your... (laughs) Britches, or is that a little too mansplainy for you? Hang on, let oh me get gosh, to it. Oh my gosh, I can't stand you. Hold on to your boxer briefs. <laughs> Why would I wear boxer briefs? Why wouldn't you? They're roomy. Don't be gender. Don't be gender normative. But why would <laughs> I wear them? I, you know, I can't. I can't. I can no longer assume what your underwear looks like. I don't want to approach this anymore. Let's get to the questions for the topic. <laughs> So journalists have come under fire in recent years. Many, many journalists have. But many reporters risk their lives still for the truth every day. So is true journalism worth the price? The actual journalists out there risking their lives to get the story, to get the facts. Is is that worth the price anymore? I think I think truth is worth any price. I think. I w- you know what? I wish that was a, uh, a piece of the moral American fiber still. You know, if, I, if I, we had more of Woodward and... What, uh, Woodward yeah, and Bernstein. Woodward and Bernstein. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had more of those folks. I feel like the truth should always out. But but now, you know, with, uh, I guess we could say the, the, the outrage being so popular, it pays a little bit to fabricate. And even, oh man. Okay, so I know more about entertainment journalism, video game journalism than, than, than the real journalism. Mm-hmm. But even in those cases, people will run the first report story. And even if the if the truth goes against the narrative, very rarely do you see a updated or redacted story. You might see a tweet to the effect of, "Oh, you know mm-hmm. what, well, we got it wrong," and then the, but the article still stands as originally written, and that's uh that's bullcrap. The truth should set you free. Well, it should matter, and then a big portion of why I even bring this up is you have journalists that go out there and risk their lives for real stories, real important stories. And they fall on deaf ears because nobody's listening. And if they don't agree with it, they discount it. <laughs> Facts. They just So that's discount. where I was going to go is, yes, in terms of making sure that the, the truth is out there, that people are getting the real 
answers to questions that they might not have even known to ask. It's important and it's something that not a lot of journalists are doing anymore is trying to find what are the actual questions we need to be asking that haven't been asked before. But the problem for them, like you were alluding to, is that if it's if it goes against one person's belief system, then it's automatically no, that can't be true. There's no potential for people to believe any sort of evidence or science or factual logic if it if it goes against their line of thinking. And people like regular citizens are not inclined to follow up <laughs> on what is real evidence-based and what is opinionated. And so I think with so many people who have been lied to by like fake journalists, I'll call them, there's a lot of feeling of deceit when it comes to it, but also just a lot of naivety in terms of the readers and the audience. And so journalism is even harder now for those individuals because they have to now try to figure out how can I get the truth across to people who just don't want to hear it because it's against their, a lot of times, political leaning side. Like it, I don't even know how some of these topic it, topics fall under left or right, but they somehow anymore do. And so it makes the journalist's job even more difficult to try to convince people of this is the actual truth. This is the evidence. And this, I'm, I'm sorry that it doesn't go with your normal line of thinking, but here's something that you should consider. People just don't have that open-mindedness anymore. Yeah, it really makes me sad when you think about it that, you know, for all of our lives, there's there have been journalists out there that have gone for the real story and tried to get to the truth of things. And for most of most of time, people would rely on those stories for facts. But in the last several years, uh, not so much. And, and people discount, like you said, any anything they don't agree with. And so, of course, this term arose, which puts the real journalism areas at, uh, at bay because now they're, yeah, they go out, they get the facts, they get the truth, and they're risking their lives and it doesn't matter because people won't listen unless it really appeals to their their side of things. So the term fake news has has been thrown around a lot these days and so much so that many believe it's just the case, right? We've gotten to the point where many people just discount the news entirely, which means those journalists have risked their lives for nothing, for naught. So where do you guys land on the current environment of journalism? I know I know Zach, you've always wanted to be a journalist. Like how does that factor for you? Where we are currently? Fake news. Fake news. Where are you at with fake news? Fake news is a problem. Yes, uh, I think almost more more so than fake news is a problem that no one reads past the headline. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you're if you're new if your news can't be summarized in one sentence, people don't care, and they will just believe the one sentence without fact checking at all. So, I mean, you ask is is the cost of journalism worth it? I mean, I still I still do believe that in my heart, but I don't know, man, are people. People can get fake by trick news because they're letting themselves be fake by trick news. Tricked <laughs> by fake news. There oh, it is. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> fake news is less of the problem than it is people's unwillingness to actually look into things. A hundred percent. It's the people. It's not necessarily the news itself, because if people were able to see outside of their worldview, their narrow scope then they would want to look further into finding what are the facts of this? What does the article actually say? I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody post something that's not true just because of a headline. And then um, somebody will ask a question where it's directly answered in the article. Mm -hmm. And they're like fully in agreement, blah, 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 blah. But then they ask something and it's like, okay, so you didn't read this. You read, and if you did read this one article, that's the only thing you read. You did not try to investigate further, try to see what are the opposing, the arguments behind it, and actually allow yourself to consider some of those views. Even if you still disagree with them, at least read to see what the other side is. And there's a lot of problem with the 
news, quote unquote, news organizations that are just clickbaity and are just trying to put out online articles and listicles and trying to take advantage of people's negligence and, again, naivety. And, and fear. Just, and take advantage of their fear. That too. Monopolize that too, of it. course. And so the problem is led by the people, though. Because if they were to take a second, like Facebook should not have had to incorporate something that said, no, this is not true 100 percent. Please stop sharing it. And it tells you below the article or something. And yet people will still spread it and say, no, Facebook is just trying to minimize our voice. (laughs) They sure are (laughs) trying to minimize your dumbness. That's what they're trying to do. (laughs) Keep it to a minimum. Right. And so like. The problem to me is not necessarily journalism or the news because they're usually driven by the demands. Every business is. That's the only way that they're going to stay alive. So if people would stop just indulging on that stuff and stop immediately criticizing an opposing view as fake news without any sort of evidence, if you can provide evidence, then sure, you could say that's actually not true. I just wanted to let you know this piece, you know, there may be some some scope of factual information here, but it's spun out to lean towards your values. And that's not necessarily truth. People love to be told that they're wrong. That's like their favorite thing. People just (laughs) wait for them to post an article and someone to tell them they're wrong. It's like you're sharing it and someone goes on there and says, hey, just that's not correct. And you don't mean it smarmy or anything. You're just like, just I mean, that's not correct. I mean, here's da, 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 da. And they will just lose their minds on how you're, I don't know, pick a side, pick a party. You're just the opposite of whatever I am. And you're just trying to destroy my my opinion. This is, this is uh, my opinion. Okay. Well, your opinion doesn't dispute facts. And, and I don't know how we got to that point where, I mean, yeah, it's your page. You can say whatever you want. Well, then unfriend me if you, if you don't want to know like the facts, because I'm not going to have a discussion with someone that's not interested in facts. They're only interested in, in opinions. And the state of journalism, I will actually, I hate the term. I hate the term fake news. I hate it because, well, you mm-hmm. know who started it and he got it going and it became this this thing that was slapped on every news outlet. And it's just not true. It's just not true of every news outlet. Now, I do think that certain outlets, your CNNs, your Fox News, your MSNBC, yes, I think they are party favorites. I just do. They're more opeds than they are facts. But they do have, all of them have facts on their on their network at different points. You just have to dive into them and find them. But you find organizations like the BBC. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple other ones. They're they're more of just fact checking organizations. They're true journalism, or for the most part, journalism. They're not just going for clicks or, or ratings. And they have more of here are the facts. What what do you think? And here's we don't we don't throw our opinions into all of this. Now I do think CNN, Fox News, they're all throwing their opinions in. I don't care about your opinion. I don't care. That's not journalism to me. That's where I think journalism has kind of lent itself to that term of fake news because they've allowed themselves to be more opinion shows or op-eds than they are actual just fact-finding missions. So for many of the major networks, I do think fake news applies. I hate to say it because I don't, I think it's a very negative term, but a lot of them have kind of led them, led their organizations to that point. Like it's their fault. (laughs) It's our fault too, as people. Well, it's as definitely society, yeah, it's definitely society, our fault because we're the one leading that. But they're journalists, and they, but yes, and they yeah. have a, they have a personal stake in how they they frame the story. That's not news to me. See, as soon as you Correct. have a personal stake in it and you're framing it a certain, I know people are gonna be like, "News has done that forever." I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Growing up, that is not how the news was reported to me. The news was reported. Here's what happened: guy was murdered in Central Park. Police are looking for this suspect. That's it. Not police are looking for this suspect. Mm, sure looks like she did it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like <laughs> that has changed and it has become this this thing where the news is framing the story. And that's not what journalism is. That to me, it's creating its not own journalism. narrative. It is. It, it, that is when it bleeds into entertainment. That's not news. That's entertainment. I say, or, or activism. Not even entertainment. Like journal, journalists putting their political views first is... You become, you're not a journalist, you're an activist now. Yeah, that's true. 
And here's one of the problems as well is we know know what an actual journalist is. We we have like the def- the definition of the scope of work that they're going to do and that they're going to do it for facts. They're not going to do it for clicks. Because a lot of times some of the most appalling and shocking stories that have been investigated and discovered are the ones that are could push away their entire viewer base. You know what I mean? Like there's the newspapers might say, uh, this is not something that's going to make us popular. <laughs> if yeah. We decide to move forward with this. Our lives could literally be at stake if we do this. And they say it's worth it. And they go ahead. But part of the problem is that now with all of these online sources and people don't create like a collective list of here are some some organizations like Aaron said, you know, I trust BBC or whatever that are more neutral and fact-based and less opinionated. And so you have all of these online journalists, quote unquote, and I'm using that term loosely, who do opinions and try to present it as fact, but because you don't know, like people aren't investigating who is this person that I'm reading this from? What's their background? What's their, what's the actual point of view and perspective that they're leading this narrative from? And so we have these people who basically imitate journalists and they're just opinionated writers and that's all they are. But because they're online, it's easily accessible. It's it's right there in your face people and quote that them stuff as gets facts. spread. Yeah, people quote right them as facts. So fast. Look, here's this article. Okay, well, your article doesn't have any statistics. Well, there's several sources. There's not a single name source. That's a lot of off the record. I mean, okay, you can have a few, but you got to have something on the right. You got to have some fact that I can. Or, I can or it comes back to like um, some very, very opinion focused news center. Like you had said, like the Fox News and the the MSNBC and blah, 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 blah how they can be very divided and, and have their scope based off of their perspective. Then they might link back to one of their articles or something like that. And that's not, you know, that's not the evidence that we're talking about. That's not somebody who's done their research and have found the the truth. You're just reframing an already discussed opinion to try to present it as fact again. And that's just not the same thing as as a source. No, it's not. And and you also have tons of journalists on all net, they all networks do this, but they get a guest on from the other end of the, you know, they say that they're a journalist. They get a, a guest on who's obviously on the opposite end of their particular frame of mind. And they just shout them down. Like that's the interview technique. Every time that person says something, yep. they shout them down, they shout them down because they're not in line with whatever their opinion is. And it works on both sides. I've seen it on both network or all three, all the freaking main USA networks. And it's just like, that's, that's horrible journalism. That That is not an interview. That is a shouting match. I don't really see, I guess it's a good television. It's bad reporting. Just bad reporting. I've seen Anderson Cooper do it. I love Anderson Cooper. I've seen him do it. I'm like, that's not journalism, man. As soon as you start talking over your guest and not actually, you can present facts and re, re, rebut them. But if you're talking over their answer, if you're shouting down their answers, that's not journalism. That's where it stops being journalism and it starts being, starts being entertainment. Which brings me to my next question okay this is kind of an important one to me whenever you're online or you're talking to somebody in person wherever you converse or you have your your fits of discussion right there's always that thing where you're going back and forth we i feel one way you feel another way and we agree to disagree you know i i think it's an important (laughs) thing if you have an opinion we agree to disagree if you guys don't see it one way or if you don't see you know you're just going back and forth for three hours i don't see what that does anyone it's time to agree to disagree But my question to you guys is, can you agree to disagree when there are facts involved? Is that when, no, we can't agree to disagree. There are facts involved. The facts say this. I'm not going to dispute your, you can have your opinion, but the facts say this. Well, I definitely agree with what you're saying in that it's hard to to say that it's a disagreement if it's a conversation that's based around the facts of whatever case or um, conversation that you're having, because then it's a disagreement to me is we have different opinions and opinions are different than facts. 
So if we're agreeing to to disagree, that means you have one perspective, one opinion, one belief system that differs from my own. Um, We could have a conversation about pick your topic anywhere, and somebody is going to have a, a disagreement with you on that. However, where the facts come in, that's not a, an agree to disagree because your disagreements are based on your opinion. And so you could say, this sucks. I wish this weren't the case or something. But that is, it's hard to tell people, I'm sorry that your opinion is one way, but the facts are different. So you're going to have to accept what the truth is because people don't want to hear that. They are so like molded into, and this is really unfortunate, just like it's everything is a political issue now. Things that affect everyone and evidence and research are all scientists are all on the same page. And then it becomes like a political issue and people just defend their party line And they don't even like consider anything else. And so it's just people automatically go against each other. And there's no conversation about this is what the facts are. This is my opinion. There's a difference. So while your question in short is, can you agree to disagree on facts? No, I don't think you can. Man, holding the party line is is the worst thing that's happened to America. Mm. That's my, that's my hot take. We no, <laughs> we no longer because everyone always says pick a side, right? And yeah. that's dangerous. You should not pick a side. I, you know, there, you should not just be like, oh, well, Democrats all say this. Well, then those are all of my opinions. That's 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 dangerous. That's where you refuse to accept other facts or truths or you should pick and choose things that matter to you as your beliefs and vote accordingly. Never. I've never voted down the party line because it's never been a case of, oh, everyone on this side is doing the right thing. Like, that just doesn't happen. No. In fact, I would say just the opposite. Usually when the parties, both parties are usually doing the wrong things. I've never, I've never seen a point of view that each one side could represent completely. I, I, just, I just don't understand that. I mean, it should be per person. I understand what you're saying. Eh, man. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get to the facts thing. I guess I'm on a bit of a tangent. Maybe you should cut this or put a trigger warning. No, go ahead. But the – like I've never seen somebody's side of an argument flop faster than with, you know, the recent Democratic presidential nominee being accused of sexual malpractice. And all of a sudden that doesn't matter anymore. All of a sudden that's a cost we're all willing – we're all willing to pay that cost just to get the current president out. Excuse me? <laughs> You, you you just tore apart all of Hollywood because let's believe people at face value and investigate facts later. And now you're like, well, we really do have to wait for the results of investigation, right? Are you f-ing kidding me? <laughs> I've never seen a, a just a group. Oh, morals do not matter. <laughs> Evidently, whatever's most convenient to you matters. So anyway, back to facts. No, I mean, I mean, do you feel like it was they were doing it wrong to begin with, that they should have been take people seriously and investigate thoroughly before you make assumptions or, or proclamations? Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought we had all agreed that you're innocent until proven guilty, but uh, that is not, that is no longer the case. You are guilty until proven innocent, unless you're running for president, I guess, in which case you're innocent now. I feel like if the facts should always matter, and it, it is tricky in a case of you know, the sexual mis, uh, misdeeds, as it were, because time passes, details mur- get murky. It is an impossible thing to prove, which is also unfortunate. I get the argument of just believe the victim. Believe anything at face value is, you know, what if someone told me the earth was flat? <gasps> it's not. That would be madness. I just don't understand the concept. So, yeah, so I, at point, I, I you, you different... think at some point you're just going to fall off? Like, that's what the theory is? I don't understand that. But I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, you just drop down are. to Antarctica. It just, it like curve, you just it, right. it's like an escalator. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, flat, the flat earthers are actually a perfect example of my uh, agree to disagree when it comes to facts. Perfect example because I think if people are trying to dispute facts, those people are being woefully ignorant or choosing to be stupid. And in which case, I don't. I 
I do agree to disagree because there's no point in arguing. You can't talk somebody out of stupid. Have you noticed but that everything true. also seems to be a conspiracy theory? Like a lot of people will dispute fact with a theory. Literally, it's in the title, conspiracy theory. And yet nobody seems to consider, oh, there's nothing here that's proven. It's just people who are making a lot of correlations, but it's not really connected. If you look at anything long enough, that's like the the age old saying about going through, well, I guess it's not age old. I guess, I don't know. But if your partner, if you think your partner's cheating and you decide to go through their phone and emails and everything regularly because you think that there's Whoa. something bad about them, inevitably you're going to find something you don't like because you're seeking out that answer. It's just confirmation bias. And also, and you're so crazy and deserve so- to be single. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, there is that. But- <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about when it comes to some of these topics where people will say, no, my opinion is based on the facts of this conspiracy theory. <laughs> and while I support people who decide to have their own theory and decide to to try to find additional evidence that's not a that's not a fact. A theory is not a fact. I don't know when we got to this point where, You could say any of that without any facts. Nothing is substantiated in your claim, but you're going to say, no, mm -mm -mm. everything that science says is not true. They're lying to us. What is the purpose of them lying to us about whether they got on the moon or not? Why would they falsify those photos? Why would people lie to us about the earth being round and every image that we have in satellite <laughs> that says the earth is actually round? Why would why would this entire like global nations would have to come together to agree on this conspiracy theory? They can't even agree on oil prices. Yeah. And like That's true. saying hello. <laughs> That's the thing with conspiracy theories, and believe me, I believed in them all when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's nothing more rebellious when you're a teenager. Nothing more rebellious when you're a teenager than like, well, you know, Lincoln got shot because there was a coalition to better America. John Wilkes Booth uh, did a good thing. The Area 51 is totally existing. Of course, Bigfoot's real. JFK, <laughs> obviously a cover up. But then you become an adult <laughs> and you realize if three people know a secret, six people know about it. Mm-hmm. There, no one keeps a secret. An adult, and you think they're gonna that forty people that would have to be involved in faking a moon landing that all of them are gonna keep quiet? I don't think so. <laughs> That's except JFK was totally that was a conspiracy. I'm just letting you know, like just well, if you didn't I mean, obviously, be, yeah. I mean, there was like five people in, right there involved in that whole thing. Yeah, and we all know the Jews planted the dinosaur bones. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that either. Oh, man. I worked with a guy who firmly believed. Was Jeff Goldblum the guy who did it? I I should have worked. He believed with all of his heart that dinosaur bones were planted by the Jews to discredit our Bible. (laughs) That that would be amazing. I would love that. That would be amazing. (laughs) The most... The most vast conspiracy in human history, this guy. And right before he dies, Jeff Goldblum was like, yeah, yeah, that happened. Yeah, that was true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, uh, ben yeah, Stiller, no ben Stiller also I shows I up, did. and he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Obviously. Uh, Sorry, man, I've cut you off twice. Yeah, oh, what were you saying there? I was, I was just going to say that people will find whatever they believe in as an argument to facts, and it's really unfortunate, and it comes down to – the, like for me, I feel like there's three categories of defense for opinions against factual, like science based truth. And that's either political leanings, mm-hmm. conspiracy theories, or religion, either because it attacks their beliefs on religion or because they don't fully understand their religion sometimes and, and the truth behind that. There's just a lot of things that people will pull from, and they all tend to be unsubstantiated, unfactual based responses to quote unquote debunk the the facts that are presented. Well, and you're seeing it all over the place now. I mean, well, I will say, like, what sounds more fun? Somebody went and ate a, a bat's ass at a random market, 
or that there's an entire lab that's working on a, a freaking virus that exploded and took over the world. The the lab one sounds cooler. I mean, that sounds like everything we we love in movies. So that's a lot cooler than oh, this guy ate a random bat's ass, and that's how we ended up with this thing. That's re- that's gross. But there's also I, I really feel like people will do they will spend all day if <laughs> we've gotten to the point in the world, not just America, the world where our opinion is so infallible and so the most important thing in the world because all of our all of the freaking modern day parents and everything, hey. You get a participation trophy and you get a ribbon and da 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 da. And everybody's so good, even though they're not, that nobody ever can be wrong anymore. Nobody can just accept, I I don't know enough about this topic. I am not informed enough about this topic. So I'm going to bend the facts to suit whatever my personal frame of mind is. Like, it's boggling to me where we are as a society and how we are just okay with because I was raised like always research everything to the to the tenth degree. Know what you're talking about before you talk about it. Otherwise, you're just kind of mumbling. Really, I mean, if, if you don't know what you're talking about, you're an idiot. Is how I was raised. I'm not saying that that's the truth. I'm just saying that's how I was raised. And so, facts are very important. If you if you somebody has facts and you're like talking to someone and they start throwing facts at you, step back. Go look at that stuff. Read up on it. See if you agree or disagree. With what they're saying are facts, like, you know, there are people who determine facts are facts, which aren't facts, but look into it. Don't just assume that you know better than everybody. I mean, there are people that have strong arguments that you should listen to. We don't. And I've been guilty of it, too. I've been guilty. Everybody's guilty of it at some point. Yeah. And we also don't have a level when it comes to journalism and journalists and these online writers and whomever you're getting your information from, there's no more level of accountability. And what I reference when I'm saying that is I feel like we used to have news news outlets and there were like people that were substantial because they, they went based on facts. So you knew that they were credible and you could rely on them as a source of information. And if they weren't, If they provided something that was inaccurate, that person would be called out for providing misleading, you know, non-fact-based news. And now because we have so many people who are just like, I got my online degree in virology from, (laughs) you know, Google.com. And so I'm educated enough to write an entire news report on this, quote unquote, news report on this. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. But who holds that person accountable? Who looks at who the author is of it and says, yo, you're not providing factual information. What are your sources? What's your evidence? That person never has to be held accountable. Yeah, it's true. There's no concern for the people who are writing to be held accountable to provide factual information anymore because people don't care about that. Like Zach said earlier, they care about the headline. They're hardly even opening the article online. Man, I I have actually sent articles where, because sometimes if you find a really good writer, they will have a misleading headline and the actual body of the story will lead you a different way, right? I mean, I'm sure we've all seen this, right? We have a reporter that... So if I, if I find one of those, which it's great when you find one because like, ah, oh, that guy knows how to write. We want the headline that kind of diverted you from what the actual article means. And you send it to them and it corroborates their opinion. And like, see, I told you. I'm like, you didn't read it, you son of a bitch. Because it totally says what you said was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but we are. We're, we're a factor. We're a nation of headlines. We're a world of headlines. Headlines are the way to go. It's sad. Sad. I can't tell you how many times people are like, did you see... Whatever happened, and it's just their headline. They didn't read any of the details. They didn't know any of the information. They didn't know any of the facts. They're just basing an entire diatribe of opinions and a good portion of their day off a headline. And uh, God, it's I feel bad for real journalists anymore. I really do. Trying to make it. Who care about the if truth? If there are any left. There's got to be, right? I mean, there there are plenty of people that want that. They just want to get the truth out there. But they also work for... Outlets that are corporations. I mean, and that once you become a corporation, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about a dollar. You know, it is no longer about truth and honesty and integrity and pursuing the truth. Although I still think the journalists want to do that. But unfortunately, they don't always control what makes the air or what makes print. You're right. You're right. 
It's in. So here's my my final question, and we can wrap this one up. Do you think people trust the news anymore? Do you honestly, personally think people overall trust the news anymore? Well, well, no, or else we wouldn't be having this conversation. I mean, <laughs> we could all be wrong. <laughs> uh, that's true. I'm open to that, Aaron. I'm open to being wrong. I don't know, like what like what I do right now because I, I do find it uh, difficult to find the truth of a matter. Is I do look like I listen to podcasts that do not politically align with me at all, and it gets me angry. But I'm getting the other side of the story, you know, and I kind of have to, like in the current culture, I kind of have to try to put the picture together as best I can because I know I can't trust, like I can't trust any website to be um, bipartisan anymore. Everyone, everyone has picked a side, as it were, and every news story is filtered through that lens, mm-hmm. and it is never. Just getting straight up facts seems impossible. It is, you know, you'll you'll get like one fact at the top of an article and you get four paragraphs about how, you know, how this affects the inner city community and how terrible gerrymandering is. And if only they had better voting rights, then this then this murder wouldn't have happened. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't think it's how it works. What? I thought, I, what? I wanted to read an article about 11. I thought, I thought it was sad this 11 year old boy died, but I guess I got to care about gerrymandering now. Yeah, it's all politicized. Yeah, I don't understand that. You kind of got to wade through all the crap. So, yeah, it is impossible. I guess you just – it's maybe finding maybe finding the journalists you can trust. Mm-hmm. But even that, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough right now. So, no, I don't think we trust the news. I think it's hard to trust the news because everyone has an agenda <laughs> and you're trying to figure out what – where can I go for someone who just doesn't – care about where their political party is, where they don't idolize a politician. Also, I never thought I would see the day where people literally idolized politicians. And and not for you were hired. You're supposed to be a servant. You're not an entertainer and you're not a celebrity. I'm never gonna sit there and want an autograph from a freaking politician. I'm sorry. That you're you're our employee. Sorry, Amanda. I'm just sorry. That gets me mad. Unless they do something that's like literally substantial to changing Americans' lives, then I can understand, okay, you respect that that person has done something for everyone that has benefited everyone. But instead, it's what what do they say? What are they saying? And you idolize them based off of what they're saying, not what off they're doing and the way that they treat people and different things like that's how you would normally gain respect for somebody. Now it's just which political party do they align with and which one gets the other side super, super mad and how can I support that person the most? Because it obviously enrages other people and that's my goal in life now. Yeah. I really hadn't considered the fact that politicians are celebrities now. Living Color called it, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That is true. Cult of personality. That's all it's about. Yeah. It's it's kind of, it's, it's wild. I just have like a revelation of like, oh, I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought about that. But yeah, because it's not even just the president anymore. It's your senators are now idolized. Yeah. And man, <laughs> 10 years ago, I could not have told you who five senators were, mm-hmm. which I guess, you know, is a bit of my ignorance, but also because outside of your state, your senator didn't matter. But now- but now they're now they are celebrities. Now they're visiting Animal Crossing islands, and it is news. Oh, God, that is. And strange. it's not for what they're doing. It's not for what actual bipartisan change they're enacting and how they're working Mm-mm. with the other side. I've I've it's listened because of to, sound bites and whatnot, right? And I've listened to these conversations with politicians where they talk about their side of things. And that's great if you support that their side of things where you're like, oh, I feel like I'm being represented finally. But it's like, okay, but there's not just us. So how is that helping all of the other people? How are they working with their peers? Because now it's become something where 
people support and idolize politicians who don't work with their peers on the other side of the, of the party line. And it's like, how did we get here? And that makes like journal journalism news now. Mm-hmm. Oh, this person is defiant in doing their damn job. Like, how did we get here? How is that news? How is it something to support and idolize? And so it just comes down to these lines and people don't care about the facts. So the news doesn't need to represent them because people don't care anymore. All they care about is defending their own mindset, their own beliefs, and enraging the other side. I genuinely Mm -hmm. feel like there's a level of vitriol in our society when it comes to topics where they will politicize any topic. I mean, literally, it could be about child trafficking, and it would somehow get politicized and divided, and one side would try to enrage the other with who's supporting, you know, or how it's being done, or it can never just be, this is an issue that we can all agree sucks and is stupid. Let's work on it. Well, if you didn't, if you didn't traffic those children, they wouldn't be working today. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. That's true. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. That's how we get workers into America. I can't wait for that soundbite to be taken out of context 15 years later and used against me. Absolutely. That's how it works. <laughs> it, might, it might not even take 15 years anymore. Well, my answer to that question is this, you know, do people trust the news anymore? I will say like major outlets, you shouldn't. I hate to say that. I really hate to say that because I used to, I used to love watching the news day, every day. Now it makes me sick. I shouldn't say you shouldn't. Like there are some definite, you know, take, take a look at it, find the facts and everything else. If you can wade through the opinions but nobody can sit there and defend their news outlet, whatever it is, if, especially if you're in America. You're going to tell me you're for CNN? Okay, cool. They've spent like four years trying to basically chastise everything Trump has ever said. I, I'm not saying I like or dis- dislike the man, but no matter what he does, it makes headlines that he screwed something up. He did something wrong. And some of it he does to himself, absolutely. But they have been beating that drum since he won the election. So he's never in their mind ever been president, even though he technically won fair and square. CNN, they, they've got an agenda. They make it clear they have an agenda. You look at Fox News, tell me that they didn't spend the eight years before that doing the same thing with Obama. So it's just like everybody's got their freaking agenda and they're just doing their agenda politics. That's all it is. I don't want to hear anybody tell me how their outlet is not biased. 100% they're biased. So how do you trust the people that are providing you the news when you already know that they have a specific agenda, especially when the information you're trying to get is often divided by political party. That's where it makes it hard. I mean, it's hard to get. The only thing I ever feel like I used to get facts on were murder cases. And now they make those into celebrity things where it's like you're either for the defendant or you're against the defendant. I just want to know what the facts are and I'll, I'll find out what the jury says, man. (laughs) God. Not everything has to be a debate. Now we got to fight over if you believe Casey Anthony did it or didn't do it, or if she should be dating or shouldn't. I don't care. Just tell me what happened. I'll figure it out or I'll wait until the jury figures it out. I don't need you to tell me what my opinion should be. And that makes it hard to trust news. And I think that's how people are anymore. Well, and it's gotten lazy. It's much easier to inject your opinion than it is to go out and do the actual research. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. And let me tell you how boring research is. It sucks. And trying to like put together, you know, feasible information and evidence and trying to make sure you're linking those sources. That takes time. We're in such an expedited world and we don't care about facts. And, and I don't mean we as in our group, I just mean society collectively does not care about the facts enough to pressure journalists to, to present that information. It's so much easier to put your own opinion and like Zach said earlier, your political lens through and just say, okay, here's what I'm going to write, da, 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 and done. It's done within, you know, 30 minutes to an hour or whatever versus somebody who's doing legitimate factual evidence-based research and it's not opinionated takes a lot more time. Well here, and I, and I know we got to wrap this, this show up, but I'll end on this part before we move on. Facts matter. Facts always matter. Whatever your opinion is, at least try to get the facts of it. So you have an educated opinion because if it's not educated, it's just, I, I just threw a dart at a board and you're just hoping it sticks. That's really all it is. Facts really, really do matter. I'll tell you what, 
if a dude really ate a bat's ass, I want to I want to investigate that guy and I want to talk to the guy. I want somebody to ask him the hard hitting questions. What? Why did you want to eat that bat's ass? Like, what about that? <laughs> <laughs> seem like a good idea for you. Drop the whole lab conspiracy thing unless you have actual substantial facts to back it up. And if you don't, and we find out that it was a guy who just was hungry for some badass, why? That's important information so that we don't have it happen again. So we can go to the next guy who's thinking about a tasty rump of bat and we can tell him, hey, this last guy did it. It didn't work out so well. I think you should just back off. You should bat off. Huh? <laughs> and not, not crunch on <laughs> I it. But I if, get it. But of course, he won't listen to us because we don't know what we're talking about. He knows better. He saw something on MSNBC that told him it was okay. Crunch, crunch. He's in. That's what's Can I ask happen. you guys a question? Like just a quick answer sort of thing. I've never eaten a bat's ass. No. <laughs> Do you feel that? But I would. <laughs> no soy sauce. Everything's tasty. Do you, Do you feel you have an obligation to correct unsubstantiated, infactual information that is spreading and saying, this is not accurate, here's my sources. Do you feel you have an obligation to do that, to prevent that mis- you know, spreading of misinformation? And secondly, how do you handle people that you care about, even if they directly contact you and send you stuff that you know is already been debunked <laughs> and they just they're so insistent on that being their perspective? How do you what are your opinions on those things? Just like quick. I ignore my dad completely. That's what I do. Uh, (laughs) i love him but nope (laughs) he'll send articles that are from i don't know billyjoes.com uh zach you go first what do you what do you think i mean i I said it earlier you can't you can't fix stupid uh people are choosing especially like some of these you know some things are just wildly untrue like the earth is flat in that case you can't you're never going to change that person's mind because they are choosing to believe something that in the back of their mind they know is incorrect. Uh, so no, I do not feel obligated because you've never changed anybody's mind, especially on the internet. You've never changed anybody's mind by screaming at them that they're wrong. It's that's not that has never happened. Uh, I will True. say PSA to anybody: turn off your Twitter blocks, turn off your engage in opinions you don't agree with, please. Absolutely, educate yourself. Uh, do I, if, if it's something where it's erroneous, erroneous fact throwing outs, like they're throwing out wrong facts as opinions and I can verify it quickly and just drop a link like it's hot, I will. Um, <laughs> if it's an opinion based, but that's only if it's like fa- fact based, like if somebody's disputing science, that just irks me. And I, if I can drop a science link real quick and be like, look, you can say whatever you want. Here's a link. Look at it. And there's research there. And then walk away. And then I try to stay out of it. Of course, somebody always baits me and I can be dumb. But but when it comes to opinion based, like if somebody's disputing like a, a personal choice or personal opinion, like pro-choice or pro, pro-life, pro that's an opinion based argument. I'm not going to wait into that. You, you're, you're welcome to whatever your opinion is. I have mine. You have yours. Whatever. That that's not what I'm going to dispute with someone because I don't feel like it's my right to determine how you feel about a personal issue. But if it's a factual issue, I will drop something in. And at some point, I'm just going to walk away, probably after I throw some gasoline and light a match. Get that fire going. That's what I'm saying. Fair enough. Okay, so my story, was it truth or was it fiction? I, mean, I can barely remember your story anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, the guy, uh, truth. Okay, Amanda? That got riddled with bullets? Yeah. Truth. That story is true. That was uh, Jefferson Pereza Lopez was killed in Brazil on January 17th, 2018, while watching TV. His radio station was also burned down twice before, I believe, for he was he was calling out his local politicians. That's what happened. Wow, 2018. So re- I, yeah. when you were telling the story, I imagined it fancifully in the 50s or something. No. Right. I mean, that's why I, I searched for a very recent. There's actually a lot more stories. So. I know there are true journalists out there. They're still trying. Unfortunately, their stories aren't getting told because we've got Trump 24-7 or we've got, I can't believe that the Democrats are doing this or I can't believe the Republicans are doing this. And I'm, I'm like, guess what? Both parties aren't doing their job. How about that? We just stop there and go back to facts because neither one of them are doing their job, which is to get things done. That's literally their, their one job. Stop reporting on the freaking pissing matches and stop making them celebrities, <laughs> make them go back to doing their job, and you cover the real news, the stuff that matters. 
like these guys in their lives. Can you lives. believe we really, we really got to the point in American history where people were like, yeah, but both presidential candidates are known rapists, so what are you going to do? <laughs> Can you believe that? That's where we're at. I, I firmly believe you're innocent until proven guilty. And No, I, I do agree. I'm just saying that's where the argument – as of the recording of this podcast, the argument seems to be, well, what do you, you know? Yeah, which which one's oh, more, well. which one's less which yeah. one's less criminal? Which one's right. less potentially rapey? And you're like, hmm. Well, well, let me after five years of um, however long it's been with the Me Too movement, where I've been saying, hmm, don't trust this, believe the victims, and all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, but I really want that guy gone. So I guess I'm just gonna yeah. have to swallow my pride here. Never, Rough never time. seen a movement so so easily swept away. It did go pretty fast. I guess there's a question mark at the end of that. It's like, me too? And they're like, no, not you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's inconvenient <laughs> to my it's inconvenient to my narrative? Oh, well, I guess okay. Goodbye. Uh, this would be a fun last episode of Smirk. I know, right? Yeah. You really gotta put a content warning at the top, man. <laughs> what is the title of your story? The Assassination of Fake News. Mm. The Assassination of Truth. That's what it should be, but that won't get the SEO going. So we're going with the assassination of fake news. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. smart. Fair enough. You're gonna. All right. Hey, uh, pretty much. That's what have What have we talked about this whole episode? The headline matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're not. I see you're playing right into our folly, man. I'm just doing whatever I can. <laughs> There's so many podcasts that are coming out because of everybody stuck at home. We got to fight for our right to yeah. share to party. To party. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not where we were going. <laughs> oh, man, that was a long one. As our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. I hope that was okay that we tackled a real-life topic. Uh, if you'd like to have yours read, email it to mystory at smirkpodcast.com. Be sure to tell us what your theme is and throw in some questions if you want. That's my story at smirkpodcast.com. And if you like Smirk, please share this episode on your social media outlets. Join the conversation by joining our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast. Be sure to use the show's hashtag Smirk. And as you write your own life story... Always remember to tell it with a smirk. That was a good time. It turns out politics uh, creates a conversation. I think we had a great conversation. It's a shame smirk is going to be canceled (laughs) after this, but... Uh.